Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to buy a brand new gaming monitor in 2024, chances are the best one you can buy is on this desk. These are both the latest 240 hertz 4K displays, one from ASUS and one from LG. This is a QD OLED, this is a W OLED. The question is, which one of these two is going to be the best gaming display? What are the differences? And ultimately, if you are in the market for a new gaming monitor, are either of these actually worth your money? So join me as we go through everything you need to know right after a short word from this video's sponsor. If you want to get an epic new gaming rig but don't want to build it yourself, don't worry, Veltstorm has you covered. Available to buy through Newegg, these brand new gaming PCs are built to please with a wide range of price points, designs, and performance levels. All Veltstorm PCs are built with exceptional quality parts, regardless of the budget, and are created by enthusiasts, and come with lifetime help and support. They're assembled in Oregon, USA, and come with Windows pre-installed, so all you need to do is hook it up, download your favorites, and get gaming. Grab yours today with the link down below. So yes, I've definitely never been surrounded by so much high-end OLED HDR monitor as I have today, but actually there are quite a lot of differences between the two. These are not monitors that use the exact same panel, despite the fact that they both have 240 uh, 4K HDR and are OLED. The differences are a lot more than subtle. And if you haven't already worked it out, we are going to start with our ASUS monitor. This is the OLED PG32UCDM monitor. This uses a QD OLED panel, which is from Samsung, whereas the the LG uses a LG display W OLED panel, but there is a version of this coming out a little bit later in the year that will use the same LG W OLED panel that's in that one in here. Interesting. And yes, there we have usually a pretty decent stand. I don't think I've ever used like an ROG monitor that isn't like very overbuilt, but sometimes they are a little bit problematic in the fact that they take up quite a lot of space on your desk. And again, this is something on a spec sheet you're not really going to notice. But there is the main chunk of the stand. Our monitor brick. That's huge. That's basically the same size as their top end gaming laptop. 280 watt power brick. For a monitor! What looks to be a Visa mount, if you want to put this on the wall or obviously on a different monitor stand. Then you've got the base of the unit that should just clip into the back like so. But here comes the moment of truth, the display itself. Here's our I.O. while well, we've got it under the overhead. We've got two HDMI's, display port, USB-C that can actually do 90 watts of power delivery, which is going to be pretty cool if you have a high-end laptop. Then obviously we've got our USB upstream and downstream as well, as well as an optical out as well. Then it's just a case of dropping this stand into position until it clicks. And then the whole thing should just lift up. It's a lot heavier now. And then the cover should just peel off. And actually, immediately, something I noticed is that this is quite a glossy display. Some people are going to love that, others are not going to love that quite so much. Depends on your room. I mean, this is kind of a worst case scenario because we've got these studio lights here. So you can see there's the ring light, but it definitely picks that up quite a lot. But obviously you can just angle your monitor and your lights and things away. But if you're someone that likes to sit in a bright room, especially if you've got like a big window next to your desk, obviously this could be a cause for concern. In terms of adjustments, we can go up and down, left and right, and we can also tilt up and down as well. But let's now press on to our next monitor, the one from LG, our W OLED, but a monitor that definitely has a bit of a difference because this lost my scissors. This is a monitor that can not only do 4K 240, but you can actually down res it to 1080p. And then when you do that, you can go up to a whopping 480 hertz. I've stopped myself because it says do not open here and I'm opening there. But how about that for quality? 480 hertz in full HD mode. How much of a big difference this is going to make, we'll have to find out because obviously you've got so much motion clarity on OLED anyway. I mean, both of these monitors are around about 0.03 milliseconds, I believe, in terms of response time. So it's only really going to be like super high-end multiplayer games where that's going to be useful. It's not that it's not going to help with clarity, but it's more about the responsiveness and the way that the game feels in terms of input lag, where that might make like a competitive difference. A very LG accessories box is the power brick going to be smaller. It is actually slightly smaller, 210 watts versus 280. So actually this should be a little bit more power efficient. Looks to be almost essentially the same when it comes to cables, with the exception of USB Type-C, because this monitor doesn't have it. Oh, but PC! 
crazy centric. I don't care about the cables. I just want to see it. All right. Get over it. <laughs> we'll start with our stand, which is actually a new one. We now have one of these sort of like more traditional office bases. It's not as heavy as the one from Asus. Or at least I say that, but once we pick this up, this definitely adds quite a lot of the weight. I mean, it's certainly a fair bit taller than the Asus. This reminds me of like a Dell monitor, doesn't it? Nothing is really screaming gamer so far, but this should just drop into position. It feels slightly heavier to me. I could just be imagining that. Okay, no, this does now feel fairly similar, but it's actually got like a pretty cool curve to the back of it. A Little bit of RGB on the back of this, whether it's gonna be bright enough to actually make any difference. We're testing just a second, but as you can see, the IO is actually a fair bit different here because they've got two HDMIs and then one DisplayPort 1.4. You also don't have that optical output that you did on the ASUS. Definitely, I think a little bit more of a dull design. This isn't something that bothers me because I always think it should look super slick and sort of let the display itself do the talking. So design will definitely come down to it when you're sort of choosing between these two displays, but there's a lot more going on under the hood, including the fact that when it comes to warranty, LG have annoyed me a little bit because they have said that their warranty does cover burning. Fantastic. But as much as like a few days ago before filming this video, looking on the support page for this, I still saw someone from LG reply to someone and say that the burn-in is not covered. But then there was another reply from clearly someone else that said it is. So some consistency would be good, but my understanding is that the burn-in is covered on the two year limited warranty that you get with this, whereas ASUS do cover it. It's a lot clearer and they actually cover the monitor with their warranty for three years as well, which I think is peace of mind to a lot of people. There's no branding here whatsoever, and there are speakers on this, but the speaker is actually the panel itself. Especially in this day and age, you're gonna get people that wanna use their monitors for like other things, maybe plug in like an Nvidia Shield or a Google Chromecast and stream stuff to it. So having the ability to do that without needing external solution is good. But in terms of reflectivity, I think it's a little bit more muted. We'll grab our magic monitor testing light, that is spoiler alert, just a light, and then we should be able to see the differences between these two displays. And in case it's not coming across on camera, but I'm sure it is, there is actually a pretty big difference between the two, mainly being that this one is way more reflective. There's a lot more detail to the reflections that you'll have here, whereas this is a lot more diffused, but for anyone thinking that you'll be able to see reflections in one but not the other, you're gonna be very disappointed. But if you do sort of permanently sit next to some very bright light sources, this one might be a little bit of a better bet for you. But spoiler alert, grab yourself some decent blinds, control the light, and then it doesn't really matter anyway. Let's take this opportunity to have a look at the monitor adjustments. It should be a pretty similar story. I think it might go slightly higher, but there's not really anything in it. The whole thing can be tilted left and right up and down. Let's do the all-important wobble test, patent pending. To me, that looks as if the Asus is a fair bit more secure. It still wobbles, but definitely not as much as the LG. But then something that really does frustrate me about the design of Asus monitors, it's very easy for the whole monitor to just fall off the desk. Allow me to demonstrate, oh no. Whereas if you push the LG just a little bit too far back, I mean, it overhangs. But to me, the things really start to get interesting when you turn them around and have a look at the back. But this is when you can start to see what Asus have done in terms of their OLED panel management and the fact that they have a customer heat sink baked into the monitor itself, which cleverly eliminates the need for a fan. Whereas the LG does indeed have a small fan inside the monitor itself that when it gets hot, so especially if you're doing a lot of HDR, will spin up. And actually on this point, future markers here, I was going to do like an audio test of the fan, but the problem is it's so quiet that you can only really sort of hear it when you're right next to the monitor when you're actually playing an HDR game. But the problem with doing that is that then all you can pick up is the PC itself is obviously making way more noise. So while there is a fan in this monitor, it's not something at the moment that I would be worried about, but stay tuned for the full review where we go more in depth. But once you have got both of your ridiculously expensive and for some reason mismatching monitors together on your desk, you'll be presented with this. And actually, it's quite dramatic, the difference, because 
This QD OLED, I've got to be honest, just looks better. It could just be down to the fact that this is a glossy panel as well, but it's a fair bit more vibrant and a fair bit more punchy and contrasty. Whereas this, whilst it doesn't have the same amount of reflections, I mean, I can't really see anything over there by the light, whereas in this one I can see pretty much everything I've got going on over my desk. It still looks good. It's still really punchy with its color, but just putting the two side by side, I think most people would prefer this. But obviously there's only so much you can gather from like a fixed static one image test. So let's probably up the ante. And what we've got running here is the Cyberpunk benchmark. Sadly, just in STR as you can't actually duplicate HDR sources, but this should be a good test for us both. You're just gonna have to make do with my hand walking you through the differences. And once again, I think the extra glossiness definitely helps this be a fair bit more punchy than the LG, but both of these look really good. And if you're not doing anything that's like a color critical application, I don't think you're gonna be unhappy with either because while there definitely are some changes I think you'd need to make in like calibration software to get it bang on, both of these do look very, very good. And interestingly, the brightness that you get in their default modes out of the box is very similar. Obviously this is gonna change when you go to HDR. It's purely just that little bit extra contrast that you're getting on the QD OLED. But I will say when I was having a look at the camera, it does look as if you've got better blacks on the W OLED than the QD OLED. But actually in real life, I'm not really sure if that is the case. If anything, again, as I say, it looks as if you've got a bit more sort of contrast on the left and the right, but both of them look great. I don't think you'd have an issue with either. Righty-o then everybody, that is our initial head-to-head -head complete, but in order to test these properly, we need to use them standalone. And on the LG, they've moved everything around, but you do still have a four-way selector, which is good, but the buttons are a little bit on the smaller side. We've got this dual mode here that you can sort of change the screen size when you're in that 1080p 480 hertz mode. One last test before we actually jump into the games though, and that is going to be some geekawatt.com. There you go, James, don't say ever, don't shout you out, don't do anything for you, uh, because I actually wanna look at the text quality on this. And to be honest with you, this is pin sharp. I can't see any sort of artifacting or anything horrible here. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is the bit that I have been waiting for, the gaming performance. And I've left the speakers on just for a second so you can get a taste of what this actually sounds like. And on the whole, actually not bad. Obviously, this is not gonna compete with a soundbar or anything like that. I do realize I have jumped the gun, by the way. I probably should tell you that this is Returnal. And the reason that I'm playing this is because this is an HDR title that has lots of vibrancy and really should allow our OLED monitor to properly sing. This is running, as I say, on a 4090 with a 4900K, 4700K, so a very high-end PC. And that there is obviously one of the issues with going for a monitor like this. You are going to need a very high-end PC to get the most from it. But actually, the first thing I think you'll notice when you get this on your desk, if you haven't had anything similar to this before, is just how nice it is to have a 4K monitor with a 32-inch form factor, because it's obviously not gonna be quite as sharp as if it was on 27, and you're not gonna be able to see as much of the detail as if you've got like a 40 or 48-inch like TV or something on your desk. But I'm sorry, this is just so easy to use. It's the perfect balance and the perfect blend really for someone that just wants something that's really easy to live with. I will admit that while this is a very nice looking image, it's very similar to what I had from my like LG C10 like TV. It doesn't blow me away at the moment. The HDR isn't necessarily like amazing. I, I think it's still good. Everything's nice and color accurate but you can definitely tell that we're in the peak brightness low mode because all of these individual orbs are not popping like I've seen from other displays. Let's proceed. I mean, actually we'll leave him firing and I'll see if I can avoid all of these orbs in the meantime. Let's see what happens. Okay, yes. So in terms of color accuracy, I've heard that this does reduce but it is now immediately obvious that this is, to me anyway, a better gaming experience because these orbs, not sure how well this comes across on camera, are now way brighter. And you get the benefits of not having any of those like halo effects or anything that you'll get if it was a mini LED 
or like an old-fashioned HDR backlit display where you've got the blooming effects. But let's now swap over to a different game entirely as we can't base everything on Returnal, this being some cyberpunk and this immediately looked a lot better than it did when we had the side by side because obviously we're running in HDR now. Again, it's still not as bright as some of the other monitors I've used, but whether that is necessarily a problem, I don't think so. The whole thing I'd describe as looking very balanced. It's not necessarily like over the top punchy, but I think this is gonna be a very nice monitor. That's not a great objective, is it? It's gonna be a very easy monitor to live with if you're using this in HDR mode, but for those like ultra brightness seekers that want insane levels of punch, then maybe you are gonna to have to look elsewhere. It, it, it's always difficult to say, because I'm so spoiled. I've used so many different screens and things. I mean, I've got an LG, what is it, the G3 TV that I'm using at the moment. That's the best. Uh, experience I've had today of HDR and this is definitely not as impactful as that display but it still looks really quite nice. But now comes the time to properly test the multiplayer capabilities of this display with some Apex Legends. And I have to say, this is a ridiculously good experience. I mean, yes, I know if you had like a 500 hertz monitor, you are gonna get a better level of responsiveness. But the combination here of all of that extra screen real estate, the sharpness from the 4K, and obviously the 240 hertz of refresh rate, it really is quite something to behold. I don't really think I've had this level of everything all at once before, and certainly not on a screen that's a realistic size where you can actually sort of take in everything that's going on. Oh, what, 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 what are you joking me? Why, why is the button not right? I did get one, but... My key's been changed, melee, it didn't do anything. Outrageous. But let's now see how easy it is to go into this dual mode. Game adjust, dual mode, let's start with full wide. Oh, I think it's gonna make the whole thing 1080p, isn't it? Yes. So you can't sort of have this on and then change between the two on the fly. If you enable dual mode, it then becomes a 1080p monitor. Well, I got it working eventually, but unfortunately our team did not survive. So let's go to the training range where we can actually test this out. I've got this set to the 24 inch mode to make it a little bit smaller. And while the pixel mapping isn't necessarily gonna be as good here because full screen would be the full four to one, I would say that this still looks better when it's the smaller size, purely because 1080p obviously doesn't have to be as sort of stretched, if you like, so it's not quite as obvious that you've not got all of that detail there. I, I can definitely see the appeal here, but I, I've got to admit, if you are an eSports gamer, then surely you are just going to be buying an eSports monitor in the first place, rather than buying a 4K display. I think most people would probably rather have that extra resolution, especially when you do have things like DLSS that can be used to upscale it really effectively. Whereas if you're gonna play at 1080p, then obviously you don't have as much resolution to upscale in the first place. But we'll be testing this properly in the full review that we do of this monitor. Get subscribed if you're not already. We'll be sort of bringing that up in the next week or two. But I think that is enough LG for one day. How about we swap over to our other option, the ASUS, the QD OLED display. And uh, I've just, you get it on your desk and it just looks more vibrant. I mean, there are loads of scientific tests we can do and we will do them. We compare all the different values. But what you need to know in plain English is that if you have the two side by side, you will almost certainly prefer this. One of the problems with OLED is that if you go from having like a small white window and then you make it full screen. So if you've got a browser, you open it, the whole screen dims. And this is really annoying. And this is part of like the OLED like protection and because it can't go bright all of the time. Uh, but ASUS actually have a setting to stop this. So do you see what I mean? That should be quite obvious on camera. We're getting that. So with the whole thing turned off, you can see the whole screen dims when this white window appears. And obviously this gets worse, the bigger it is. Like as you resize it, look, look how obvious that is. That is gonna drive you up the wall. It's not actually as obvious in SDR mode. It's still happening, but there should be a setting in here. There we go, called uniform brightness. And then the whole screen has been dimmed a little bit. And then now it shouldn't change as much and I can confirm it works. You're now you're not noticing anything there. That's really good. And this is a Asus exclusive feature. And then let's have a look at the text here. Is that any different? I would say yes. If you get really close you can 
start to see a little bit of purple. Again, being so nitpicky, especially with this 4K resolution, you're not going to notice it. If you get photographs and you compare the two like subpixel layouts, like magnified side by side, yes, I still think the LG will be better, but in practical terms, I don't think you're gonna notice this. And as with the LG, you do have a few customizable HDR settings. So you've got gaming HDR, cinema, console, and HDR 400 true black. But let's make this gaming HDR. And this is definitely quite interesting because to my eyes, I wouldn't say there's actually a crazy difference between the two. I mean, the LG looked fantastic. It looked very color accurate. It was only that little bit of brightness that was perhaps a little bit I don't want to say I was shortchanged, but again, compared to the absolute best displays of any kind, I'd say you could notice that it was perhaps a little bit more toned down. I'd say that this definitely looks a little bit better, but I mean, nothing crazy. I mean, it's when you get all of these lovely highlights and things, they just have a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more pop to them. And in a game like Returnal, where obviously we have all of these things going on at once, it does make a big difference, and this is exactly the sort of game where a monitor that may not be able to sustain high brightness for ages, but can for like mere moments on screen, is still really, really useful. And I mean, this looks absolutely fantastic. But let's move on to something a little bit less muted then, shall we, with some Cyberpunk 2077. And I've just worked out, by the way, that when we cycle through the modes, for some reason, right, console HDR seems to be the worst because it's not quite as bright. But then HDR 400 True Black that I would expect to be like the least bright setting seems to be the most punchy of the lot, which is really odd. I'd actually say this is the way to go. This is what we've got on here now. HDR 400 True Black, console HDR, that's way less bright. Cinema HDR then makes that brighter, but kind of only in certain bits. And then gaming HDR is similar, but then it brightens the rest of the image as well. I wouldn't want this image to be brighter for like the most part. I mean, yes, in explosions and highlights and things, yes, but I I I'm really pleased with this actually. This is a fantastic looking display in HDR. But ladies and gentlemen, I think we have time to slide into just one more game with that one, of course, being that same Apex Legends. If you're wondering, by the way, a 4090 gets between 200 and 260 FPS at 4K. So yes, you are going to need to have deep wallets and deep pockets if you do want to max out uh, the full 4K capabilities of this display. And it's pretty much the same story, really. I wouldn't say that this is like dramatically different enough to say that this is so much better than the LG, but when it comes to image quality, so far with the limited testing I've done, I've preferred the look of the ASUS in every test. The main pro really of the LG is that you can do that 480 FPS mode. I mean, this can't do that. So if that makes the difference to you, then obviously go for that. I, I do think that there will be difference in price and things as well. How much more this is worth? I don't know, I'd probably pay 200 pounds more for the ASUS, I'd say. That, that's the sort of difference in, in image quality we're getting here. But it's certainly not gonna be night and day. Both of them have really low input lag. They're really gonna be super responsive for gaming. The main thing really is gonna be to have that gaming PC that can pump in that FPS to get the most out of them. But both of them look spectacular, but my money on the moment is actually on the ASUS. Well then everybody, I don't know about you, but for me, that was fascinating. I wasn't expecting to necessarily see like huge differences between the two, but putting them side by side, I would say that I think most people probably lean towards the ASUS. But if you want a quick cheat sheet, if you're choosing between the two, then if you want something that's got sound built in, obviously that's the LG. The sound is actually pretty good uh, for what you'd expect from a monitor, so that's definitely a positive. The warranty certainly seems to be better on the ASUS, but I haven't sent a monitor in for repair or anything like that, so we can't say for certain, but three years versus two years, you do the maths, should be fairly obvious. I love the mode that you've got on this for the uniform brightness, but it still is gonna be a little bit annoying turning that off every time you wanna play a game and then back on in the desktop. But if you are an avid multiplayer gamer and you want as high a frame rate as possible, this is only, only 240 hertz, whereas the LG goes all the way up to 480. And I am not the target audience for that, but that's okay. You might be. And especially if this monitor is cheaper, which I can't guarantee, but based on previous experience with LG versus ASUS monitors, these usually tend to be more expensive 
than the LG. So there's loads of reasons to go for this, and there's loads of reasons to go for this. But the question very much goes out to you guys on this. Which of these monitors is tickling your fancy? Which one do you prefer? Which one do you think is better? Let us know down in the comment section below. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. Get yourself subscribed. And if you do want to check out current pricing on either of these monitors, then you can find it listed down below with our affiliate links. But thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.